Hello, and welcome to Horror Movie Talk's special Midnight Mass After Show. On a normal episode of Horror Movie Talk, we review and discuss one horror film in great detail. But for this series of eight episodes, we will be having an opinionated and accidentally def- funny discussion on each episode of Midnight Mass. Your panel of expert hosts each week are Dr. Bryce Hansen, who holds a PhD in spookology. Say hello, Bryce. Hi. And me, Professor David Day, the foremost expert in scare no-nos. Today, we will be talking about, this is episode zero in the series. Yeah, so I mean, this is coming out well before you can even see Midnight Mass. By four days. By four days. So this is our overall impressions and review of the series. It's going to be completely spoiler-free. No worries. um, But really hyping up not only our after show that will come on the 24th, but especially the show, the show, this show, uh, is coming out on the 24th, as you said, which I believe is a Friday, Mm -hmm. 24th of September. And it's coming on Netflix and you, I'm going to say you can't miss it. That's what I'm saying right off the bat. If you had any feelings whatsoever towards haunting of Hill house, haunting of Bly Manor, this is not the same thing as, as that, but if you like high fall, high quality, Mike Flanagan horror, this is right up your alley and you should watch it. So an isolated island community in this series experiences miraculous events and frightening omens after the arrival of a charismatic, mysterious young priest named Father Paul. Riley also Riley is a character who returns home to Crockett Island, where this story is set, following his incarceration for the accidental slaying of a young woman while he was drunk driving. As we experience a community threatened by the death of their fishing industry and an aging populace, we suddenly see new life being breathed into the church. Midnight Mass brings us an even-handed look at even-handed look at the themes of religion, death, and what it means to be to live a good life amongst those who do evil even when they believe themselves to be acting in the name of God. So, yeah. Before we get into it, I would just like to say that this series is brought to you by nightchannels.com. They are the best place you can possibly go if you're looking for themes if if these are themes you're looking for in your clothing. <laughs> Horror, metal, alternative music, the occult and satanism. Mm-hmm. If these things sound cool, well, first of all, they are. And second of all, you can put them on your body for the low, low price of high, high quality that only nightchannels.com has to offer. And if you enter code HMT at checkout, you get 13% off your whole order. And this is stuff that is super, super niche that you have. It's super niche artwork of titles that you know. Um, so you all know what Hellraiser is. Mm-hmm. Well, You've never seen any of these Hellraiser prints on t-shirts or sweatshirts. Yeah. What do you like the um the cult Japanese movie House? House? <laughs> well, they've got a shirt for you too. So honestly, all we ask people to do and it's uh, oddly effective just because people love their stuff is we just challenge you to go to nightchannels.com and browse and I guarantee you will like the way you look. <laughs> Even on the first page you'll be like, "Oh shit." Uh, I've I've fallen and I've I've yeah. come to the wrong place if I wanted to not spend any money on cool shit. And then use code HMT at checkout for thirteen percent off. Um, go to our website at horrormovietalk.com to find links to all of our social media and past episodes. Um, we post new episodes of the regular podcast every Wednesday, so please subscribe and join us for those. If you'd like to get a hold of us uh, for this series or for our normal shows, you can leave us a voicemail at our voicemail line at 682-253-4468. And, of course, if you'd like to support us directly, we really appreciate that. And we offer tons of bonus content over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash talk. Thanks again for listening. Now let's get into the themes involved in the Midnight Mass Show. Yeah, so we want to keep it pretty general. We don't want to give any spoilers in this spoiler-free review. Um, and honestly, um, I retweeted a, a tweet um, from one of the stars of the show. Oh, you did? That basically- On told, our account? Mm-hmm, okay. That told you to 
how you can mute <laughs> things in your Twitter feed. Just encouraging you to mute anything about Midnight Mass on the 23rd because you're not going to want to have things spoiled. And I'll tell you what, reading the press materials for this did spoil a lot for me. Oh, did it? Um, it tells you a significant amount of like some of the surprises. It's still great even knowing that, but you will have a better experience if you don't know anything about this going into it. See, this is what And I- even better if you just watch the trailer and have assumptions about what it's going to be about. It will still uh exceed your expectations most likely. See, this is where it pays off to, you know, people give me a hard time about being under-researched. Right. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm always surprised by everything. <laughs> 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 I'm always shocked and awed, right. you know? Yeah. Um, so let's get into the themes that are present in Midnight Mass uh, overall. This is a, first and foremost, heavily religious uh, show. It's, right. while not, if you have a, a personal bent against or for religion, great. Yeah. Midnight Mass is for you. It takes a very even-handed look at the at the benefits and also the subtractors mm-hmm. to being part of an organized religion. Yeah, and it's not I, I said this before in one of the episodes. Um what really struck me about the show is that it's a very realistic depiction of church life. Yes. Of what just going to church and living a religion in just the practical way, what that means to people and how it affects their lives and their outlook on the world. But not um, but not just church life, also what it is to be a minority in a minority religion in your community. Right. Like it touches on all of this. Yeah. And just the influence that that religion and framing things in the world um as they come up um is an interesting theme in this show um and w- as with any religious thing um there's aspects of twisting it to your own means oh, yeah. uh grabs for power um but also you know that's that's kind of the cliche treatment of religion i find in in most media is that it only looks at it as a bad thing right you know this is so even-handed I it, that um, that's my favorite part. Right. Is it's even-handed in 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 so much um, of of just about every aspect of every theme is like, well, here's here's the cost benefit. Like yeah. there here are there it's it can be great, you know, in some ways. Yeah. But here there are definitely drawbacks. And I really hope it doesn't turn off people. I hope people don't get turned off by the focus on religion or like, or think that, you know, the music that they choose for the show is lame because it's based on church music. <clears throat> a lot of it. Yeah. And I, I just want people to stick it out. Oh, and yes. I think I, I can't imagine anyone can't take something from the perspective that the show has, because I can see this enjoying this as someone very into religion. I can see it people enjoying it if they're have left a religion and doesn't have any place in their hearts or or the and or is, complete atheist you know? not even atheist just people who are t- not interested in religion right. this will spark interest um for you somehow i i can tell you that the payout if you stick with it <laughs> for this show is it's worth it yeah. so um yeah th- another theme is that I chose to throw in here is the interpretate while we're on the religious mm-hmm. themes, let's take a look at the interpretations of the Bible. Right. And how it can be, it can just be twisted any old way to right. fit your purpose. Right. That is done constantly in this show. And yeah. it, both in, in ways that make me, ah, uh, that are beautiful mm-hmm. and make me so happy that, that these, that these Bible verses exist. And then also in ways where I'm like, oh, that's so gross. Yeah, or just terrifying. Or, yeah, just really scary. Yeah. Um, Another huge theme, unsurprisingly, this is a theme that really ties together most of 
Mike Flanagan's work is death. Big time. This not, is his... Not surprisingly for a horror movie or a horror series. Overarching obsession, I would say, for a lot of Mike Flanagan's yeah. work is is a preoccupation with what is dying and death. Yeah, what's death? What does it mean when you confront death or how you approach it or how you... Um, what you think happens when you die. I want to go up to him and just be like, who hurt you? Like, what? Like, <laughs> what happened? You know, because I'm sure he lost someone. And, oh, yeah. and and I want to know I want to know the story from his his well, perspective. Well, I mean, it, it sounds like this is very autobiographical. I mean, not the main plot points, but <laughs> but I mean, just from the character of Riley seems kind of autobiographical. And we're going to read a letter from Mike Flanagan that he sent out to press um, in this as, episode as kind of a you know, a mission statement for the, for the series. Yeah. And in that he, re, he talks about how, you know, he used to be an altar boy. Um, he's, um, celebrating three years of sobriety, which is basically, you know, what Riley's character yeah. is going through a former altar boy, um, going through sobriety and, uh, living with the effects of his alcoholism. Um, death also aging is a huge aspect as, as people are, approaching death there's a lot of elderly characters on this island um yeah the community is kind of dying out it's, right it's um the community has been has fallen on a, a number of hardships over the years and you know it's a small island that's primarily based on on fishing and and uh it's struggling yeah and the, and the arrival of of this new uh, you know Father Paul, charismatic I, priest, kind of injecting new life yeah. into this community, giving them hope, giving them hope, and giving them kind of a reason to perk up. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, that's it's it's interesting because I mean you know this happens. I wish it would happen to our community. <laughs> you know, like this does happen all the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it just takes the right leader to show up. Yeah, and maybe they've got bad intentions, but I mean, maybe I just, they have really pure intentions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I look at all the the rioters and counter rioters <laughs> and counter counter rioters in in Portland, yeah, I just think y'all need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they uh, don't need Ted Wheeler. We're all in agreement <laughs> about that. Oh boy. Um what else are some themes? So, I mean, love is a big theme. Um regret. Ragret. Um, ragret. No regret. Um just lots of great stuff as with most uh Flanagan material with interpersonal relationships. Um family um you know, romantic relationships, um, relationships with strangers. Expectations and, on from from parents on to kids and from kids on to parents. Yeah. Re- relationships with enemies. Yeah. Um, and um, just really, I mean, it, it goes pretty deep, but I it gets very, very metaf- metaphysical, especially towards the end, to a surprising degree um, for the subject material that it's that it's talking about in in the plot and i am so excited for people to see it oh man i mean the haunting of hill house is one of my favorite horror pieces of media ever yes and honestly like i'm struggling with where to put this in relationship to it cuz it's so close if not exceeding it's pretty good man yeah. i think i think that right now i think this ekes out i think this is this uh falls even above our uh i mean i gave it i gave haunting of hill house a 10 out of 10 so i can't go above that but no well i mean you can't go above it in score but you can say that you enjoyed one more than the other yeah i think the the one thing that this does that I seek out in entertainment experiences is it um, exceeds my expectations yes or subverts them Sur- in a surpri- surprising it way. is surprising yeah because yeah. you look at the series and it's talking about religion it's talking about a small community um, new charismatic priest comes on 
you could tell me those facts and I could fill in a story in my head that I've seen a million times. Yeah, yeah. And that story that I filled in my head, not even close. Not even close to what it is. And that's what I'm so excited about for yeah. people to see. And I think it's going, it might be a resurgence in this type of oh, story. Please, God, let that be true. This is, uh, if that, and this is coming from some jaded assholes, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, this this is really a breath of fresh air. We're so jaded that we didn't like Don't Breathe too. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't. What was the one we agreed on that we didn't like? What was the one we agreed on that we didn't like? <sighs> oh, the purge. Oh God, forever purge. Yeah, the forever purge. Purge. Ugh. Ugh. I, did people like that movie? Some people really liked it. Ew. There was other podcasts that gave it like a high score. Ugh. Let's not even talk about that. <laughs> um, I I just do want to say that that. So, so much about this hits just right about yeah. Midnight Mass and particularly the setting for me, mm-hmm. the setting and the characters, but the setting is like, it's this small island community. And I do mean tiny. Mm-hmm. We're talking a community of a, of 120 something people. It's one of those communities that you wonder like, why haven't I done more stuff in this type of community? Cause it's like, so so rich in its imagery. Yeah. You've got like the cedar siding and roofs that are, you know, paint and chip painting, paint chipping. Oh, um, it's you such know, a specific slice of America. Super, super overused boats or, you know, or everywhere or, or any, or any, any part of the world really. Like it's just this yeah. very specific, but, but also, you know, this is definitely a place that exists, Yeah, you know? Um, and the characters, though, oh, man, there are so many characters that scratch these amazing itches. Mm-hmm. The character of Bev, I love to be angry at Bev. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just, oh, I could watch the whole thing over just to be angry at Bev. Yeah. it's. I'll say that. Like, I will, I've i watched the whole series twice, and it's very rewatchable. Oh, yes. Like it's, oh, this is one of the most rewatchable. When I had to go back and watch a couple episodes of this, I was like, oh, dear. This is... And you catch more stuff, especially as as stuff is revealed in later episodes when you go back. Yes. And it's all set up in That's earlier episodes. Saying. So pay attention. And um, yeah, and, and hopefully we cover some of that in the, the forthcoming shows of the after show. And the bad guy in this is out of left field, man. <laughs> it is you... Or girl. Or girl. Yeah, bad thing. Bad. The bad thing. The big bad thing. Bad Zim. The, <laughs> um, I, I'm comfortable starting with the give it going to the score section. Do you want to give this thing a score? Yeah, I mean, I'm... Before we get into the letter from Mike Flanagan, that is. Let's yeah. score this puppy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I already said, like, I, I think this is a 10 out of 10. Like, it's... I know that it feels like every time we cover anything from Mike Flanagan, I'm all on his jock. Like, but this is... <laughs> It's so good. This is great. Like, I I can't see how this doesn't satisfy everyone in a significant way. Because if you're in it for the horror or, um, you know, the kind themes. of the more, the more visceral aspects of horror, you're going to get that. If you're in it for... Jump scares. Jump scares, you'll have that. If you're in it for, like, the dread... If you're in it that. for the interpersonal relationships and uh, and the exploration the, of deeper themes, yeah. like that's all it's all there in spades, and it's unique. I can't think of any other show or story like this. Even though there is also an, another movie called Midnight Mass. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Oh, oh let's not. Uh, hmm. So, what's your score? What would you say? I, I give it a ten out of ten. And would you say you enjoyed this more than Hill House? The Haunting of Hill House? I'd just say equal. Totally like, they're, equal. They're so... I mean, that's such high praise, though, because that's, like, in the pantheon of just my favorite mm-hmm. pieces of media. This is better than, in my opinion, better than Bly, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no question. I think we're a little kinder to Bly Manor than it probably deserved in retrospect, because I hadn't... Because after we watched Bly Manor, I re we rewatched Hill House. And, I remember. I was like, oh, oh no, this is 
this is way more enjoyable to me than Bly Manor. It's uh, different for sure. It's, it's it's more up. It's Haunting of Hill House and Midnight Mass are much more my pace than Bly Manor. Yeah, Bly, Bly Manor, Manor is much more of like a British ghost story. You know. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, this is d- a ten out of ten. This is, deserves the highest praise that I can heap on on a show or any um, video based horror media. That this is. This is top, top, top tier. So let's get into the letter from I will start. We'll, I'll take so, two paragraphs and then you'll take two paragraphs. Yeah. So this came from, this is the letter that Mike Flanagan sent out to the press to accompany the screeners. And it really sets up the series really well and gives his intentions for it. And it says, starts, welcome to Crockett Island. I'm just going to admit it. Midnight Mass is my favorite project so far. I don't like saying things like that, as filmmakers are meant to fall in love with whatever we are working on at a given time. It'd be impossible to do the work if we didn't. But this one is truly special to me. This project is more than a decade in the making. You may have noticed Midnight Mass as Maddie's novel in Hush or on the shelf in Gerald's Game. Fabulous movie, by the way. Two cameos that let me keep the project alive when it looked like no one would make it. When people on set asked me what Midnight Mass was, I smiled and told them it was the best thing I never made. As a former altar boy about to celebrate three years of sobriety, it's not hard to see what makes this so personal. It is also born of the things that scare me the most. The ideas that animate my work always scare me, but the ideas at the root of Midnight Mass terrify me to my core. Horror is an essential genre. It helps us develop bravery and courage in very small increments. It also gives us a safe place to examine the most uncomfortable truths about ourselves as individuals and as a society. The horrors and mysteries of Midnight Mass are some of the deepest and darkest I've ever explored. The isolated community of Crockett Island sits surrounded by gray water and overcast skies. While there are dark forces at work that are absolutely supernatural, This show is also about the most potent types of horrors, the horrors born of human nature, horrors of fanaticism, corruption, and blind faith. Along with the figures who lurk in the shadows, whose plans for Crockett Island are far more sinister than we know, this show is about how how belief shapes our communities, our world, and our fates. It's a show about faith, fanaticism, addiction, recovery, destruction, and redemption. Yeah, a couple of those things we didn't cover. <laughs> but yeah, it's about those. Thanks, Mike. Um, the darkness that animates this story isn't hard to see in our world, unfortunately. We see it in religious and political fundamentalism, in tribalism and racism, in science denial, in systematic corruption, and in the eyes of normal citizens moved to acts of violence and horror by belief systems that have exploited their prejudices, fears, and blind faith. It speaks to a malignant insanity that has become absolutely normalized in our world. And as Carl Sagan said, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. It's about something else as well, faith itself. One of the great mysteries of human nature. How even in darkness, in the worst of it, in the absence of light and hope, we sing. I hope you enjoy our song, Mike Flanagan, creator, showrunner. Beautiful. I'm so excited for our series of after shows to release on Friday with the release of the Midnight Mass series on Netflix. Yeah. Every show is being released at the same time. So as you binge the Netflix show, you can binge the after shows as well. We um, break down each episode in an attempt to give you a little bit better insight into what happened and what you might have missed, but not only that, to discuss the themes and uh, and maybe flesh out some of <laughs> some of the actions of each character in in greater detail, and yeah. and to speculate on what might happen in the next episode without giving right. the next episode spoilers away. Yeah. So we hope you join us in our journey through Midnight Mass again. I just want to. Really, really encourage you to watch the show because we loved it and we hope 
I mean, I know that... And we're hard to impress. Yeah, and we're hard to impress. And I think our fans of the regular podcast are going to love this show. But I hope that we find a lot of new listeners through this after show. And and if you are, welcome to the fold. All are welcome in the house of horror movie talk. Yes. Praise Flanagan. (laughs) Yes. Let us... Oh, fuck, not the woods. (laughs) Nothing good ever happens in the woods. Oh, rest in peace, Norm. Sorry, Norm. Norm. Oh, rest in peace, That was literally my clipboard hitting the button. Oh. Oh. Well, now I'm sad, which is a good note. It's a good way to start Midnight Mass. Okay. All right. um, We'll see you on Friday with our special series of after shows that accompany the series, the Netflix series Midnight Mass. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.